Okay. So we're gonna go. It, it's gonna. It's, it's no. It's, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. We're gonna go like. Okay. Life is like a mountain rainbow with its edge and here this break. There you go. If you don't do it, I'll get a mic and mic you. But I think you'll be okay. Are we ready? We're ready. I know it's one of those days. We're ready. A lot, and hopefully the words will match everything else. I tried real hard today. Life is like a river road with a dent in the gray. We must make the run successful from the trail to the gray. Watch the curve that hits the tunnel. Never falter, never fail. Seen in Christ is your conductor on his lightning train of life. Always mindful of instruction, be a duty never fail. Keep your hands upon a throttle and your eyes upon a rail. Let the danger that will guide us till we reach that crystal shore. Till the angels make the joy. We will often find obstruction, look for stars and wind and rain. On a bill or bird or vessel, they will almost hit your train. Put your trust to Lord and Jesus. Is it up there? Yes. Then how come you're not singing it? We are. No, you're watermeloning it. <laughs> but the actual, you don't have to watermelon it because the words are there. Let's start that one again. You will often find instruction to look for storms and winds and gale. Or the fear the cures the pressure, they will always disagree. Put your trust the Lord and Jesus, never falter, never fail. Keep your hands upon the throttle and your eyes upon the rail. You're doing a job. Just to save your If someone was in the crosswalk, they're going to get run over. I know. <laughs> See all those pictures of trucks getting smashed, and cars getting smashed? Because you're not blowing it. Give me one real good, a real good one. <laughs> Does anyone have a bottle of oxygen we can hook her up while she's up here? Right? I try to put the tubes behind her head so it doesn't look too obvious. Want to try one more time? Excellent. Very good. All right. Don't, don't pass that on us. You know? We'll just slide that back in here. It's the first Sundays. Oh. Get up there again. I love a lot.
shake it, shake it, there you go. Hug a friend, hug a friend, and two. morning and uh, my boss says he wants to do that and I like my job and so, <laughs> so that's exactly what we're gonna do fire it up sir fire it up it's gonna get warmed up, gonna, get warmed up. <laughs> gonna rub it on the side of your shirt or... <clears throat> Hopefully they're going to do the same words we're going to do. I don't know. We'll find out.
Uh, next week is our annual meeting. I promise it won't take much more than half an hour or less. And you'll have a package to read when you uh, arrive. And we'll have some sandwiches and sweets and coffee and tea. Uh, everyone, everyone from both churches, if you want to come down and eat something, hang around and, and uh, take a look under the hood of Beaver Harbor, or you can do that. That's okay. We don't have anything to hide. Do we have anything to hide? Oh. <laughs> Apparently we have things to hide. So you want to be careful, and uh, so that's happening next week, and uh, what else is happening? We have a birthday, to, I thought we had a birthday it's coming up soon, didn't I write that in there? Yeah. I did, didn't I? Ooh. She's not here, okay, we'll get her next time. Tell her she ducked a bullet <laughs> next time you see her. So, Davina, that's Stephen's fiance soon to be wife if I have anything to do about it. <laughs> I'm, work, I'm working on them. I'm working on them, right? I said, well, I can do that. We can, we can make that happen. And uh, so other than that, please come for the meeting. And uh, John 13, we're back into that uh, on, on Wednesday. It's going to be uh, wonderful for the ladies that are operating the treat this week. And so it'll be worth showing up to, to hear me blabber on about John 13. We're going to slow it down a little bit right now, and uh, I love this song, How Great Is Our God, and uh, I think most of you know it, and sing along, if you do. We're just meditate on the words. God is good, amen? Amen. The splendor of the gates, clothed in man.
be the last time I would have put up all the things I had to do I would have stayed a little longer held on a little tighter now what I give for one more day with you cause there's a moon here in my heart where something's missing and they tell me that it's going to heal in time but I know we're in a place where all your wounds have been erased and knowing yours are healed is healing mine the only scars in heaven they won't be sister that had a leg taken off and now a brother who's been diagnosed with cancer. How much sadness can happen to one family. Her daughter also has cancer as well, Judy, and is taking stuff off her back as well. You know, sometimes it seems like when it rains, it just pours. Does it not? It just pours. 
But our, our, our salvation is that God controls the pouring. God controls the healing. God controls. I mean, the God that made everything that we see and hear and taste and touch and feel and experience knows us here inside. Lynn, would you come up here, please? If you're able, appreciate that. And I'd like a few people to come forward. We're going to lay hands on Lynn and pray for her this morning. Father in heaven, I am praying for your child, Lord, for Lynn. And she's unfortunate to have cancer in her brain, Lord. We don't know how these things happen or how they work, Lord, but we trust that you are in control. Father, I pray and ask on my knees in humbleness, Lord, in my mind and in my spirit, that the, a song, a, 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 a balm, an ointment of healing would, would fall directly from the gates of heaven upon Lynn right now in this place, Lord, in this church, in this building, in the midst of your presence, Holy Spirit. That ye would move through her body to her hands and to her feet. That ye would swirl about, but you would end up concentrating in her mind, in her brain, in her head. And you would cause a healing to start now, Lord. Not next week, not when she leaves here today. But right now as we stand in your presence, Lord. We believe in the power. Your word tells us in James 5 that if anyone is healing, if anyone has anything wrong with them, then we should gather with the elders, gather with the church, lay hands on and pray. And that's what we're doing, Lord. We are being obedient and we ask, Father, that you show mercy upon this child. Father, we also want to pray for Donna, whose kidneys are failing, have failed, whose heart is failing, Lord, and Pope Maloga, that you would do a work in her life. And we pray this morning, and we pray for Debbie and that her family, Lord, or Gary's family, all those dealing with lost limbs or cancer or of all kinds, Lord, and, and also with Debbie. Cancer is a, it metastasizes, it goes beyond the body and affects friends and family and loved ones, Lord. Father, we ask with your mighty arm that you sweep this misery aside for us. And in faith, and in belief because you say if we don't believe that you are a God who can do then what kind of faith that we have we have a great faith we believe you can do and we lift all of these people especially Lynn this morning to you Lord in the precious and holy name of Yeshua Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. I guess you will you are struggling <laughs> God's people come to pray. There's power in that prayer. When 
God's people come to pray together, there's power in that prayer. And I've said to you many, many times, I believe with all my heart, that as the prayers ascend to heaven, the power comes down and the blessings come back to us. Today we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And we've talked about how to experience the Holy Spirit. But before you can experience something, you need to detect that the Holy Spirit's here in the first place. I love cheeseburgers. I know it's this is not... You go ahead and show it. It's it's um it's not very holy or anything. I and I cook cheeseburgers at home in a barbecue, and, and, and I love the charred edges of the meat and the cheese. I love the pink uh, pickled onions and the condiments and, and tomatoes and lettuce and everything else on there. And in my mind, as I stand here this morning, in my mind I can smell all the hamburger. I can smell it. I can hear the sizzle on the barbecue. I, I, I can see it. I can touch it. I can feel the juices running down. Because if you don't want healthy when you're having a burger, do you? You want those juices to run down your arms. Oh, yeah, drip all over your shirt. Oh, that's, that's what you want. This morning, I'm talking in particular about the Honolulu Burger. I used to have a, 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 a gentleman I sailed with on, on a ship on many different ships. He was a cook, and he got out, and he opened three or four restaurants, burger joints. And this is one on us now. If I look at this, I can see the bun and the two boys smoked bacon, cheese curds. You know, cheddar cheese is nice, but melted cheese curds, oh, little piece of heaven there, right? Oh, caramelized pineapple bread. There, and tomato and lettuce, and oh. Are we hungry? If they had the if they had the uh, Hawaiian burger at the pub on Main, we'd all go down and have one. But but Ashley tells me they haven't had it back yet. But I know if I go to Halifax or Dartmouth, I can get a Honolulu burger. The problem is I can do nothing about this burger until it's brought to me, until I recognize it in front of me. Other than that, it's just a picture on a screen. I have to do everything else. In a strange way, the Holy Spirit's like this. Jesus promised that after he died, that he would rise again and ascend to heaven, and that he would send the Holy Spirit back to us. John 16 and 5 to 7 reads this way. But now I'm going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And so God the Father sent the Holy Spirit a long time ago to live with us and to live within us and to surround us and there is no doubt that the Holy Spirit is here this morning. Amen? Amen. No doubt at all. And if you don't sense the Spirit of God here today the problem is not that the Holy Spirit is here. The problem is that there's something in your heart that's blocking it. How do you know? Here's a question for you. How do you know that you have encountered the Holy Spirit? How do you know you've encountered the Holy Spirit? We can read about the Holy Spirit. We've read other books about the Holy Spirit. We've been told by preachers and Bible school teachers and Sunday school teachers about the Holy Spirit. But how can we know that we've encountered the Spirit? The problem is like the burger that I told you about. Show that puppy again one more time. I'm going to have to drive to Dartmouth tomorrow. <laughs> I'm telling you. I can know about it. I can dream about it. I can see it sitting at the table. I can smell it. I can taste it. I can feel it. I can touch it. And we need to do the same thing with the Holy Spirit. Now, I, I have a before me... And for those who watch Tim the Tool Time Taylor, you ever watch that show? Yeah, this is the Binford X1 Infinity 5000 Lumen. Oh, 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 here we go. If you've ever watched the show, if you haven't, 
It's clean and it's funny. Yeah. And and what I'm going to do here, and I have a crystal. It's an old one. It's probably dusty. It's been hanging for 20, 30 years. And you took off the window. <laughs> that I may have taken off the window in the kitchen. I'll put it back. Trust me. I'm a man in the cloth. I wouldn't lie. People are laughing. That's right. You gotta have a grace period, right? Okay, yeah. Brian said that all the time. So I want to do this, and it's going to get done by the end of the week. And he goes, "Stop it! Stop it! You're killing me. Something might happen." God is light. God is light. First John one and five says this. This is the message we have heard from Him and announced to you that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness. And so can you detect the Holy Spirit when He comes to you? Now, I'm going to shine this. It's going to be pretty sad for people at home. That's pretty, well, you can see a bit of orange and green and yellow if you look hard enough. I don't know how to make it any better. And closer? A little better. Kind of yellowish or I don't know. And up there, if you look at all of this, more of a rainbow up there, I see purple. And if I had one of those tennis rackets, I see little Johnny, and there's little Sumo. You never watch the upper room? So, so, ha, so there are various colors up there, and Lois is going to put that on the screen right now. There's a, uh, a beautiful picture of the dove, right? There. Lots of colors there. Oh, stop it. I tell you what. I saw this at Costco when I first bought it. It says, try me, right? And I tried it, and Lois had to lead me around the next two aisles because I was blind. <laughs> I <don't> see it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Dumb, right? Uh, you might be able to see a prison or whatever, right? But what do the colors represent for you? Because if God is light, Yeshua is light. Jesus said, I am the light. Remember when they're bringing the big bowls down and the tab the tabernacles and the, the light represented the light at night in the wilderness. And when they finally came down after eight days of the festival, Jesus stood up and said, I am the light. And the Holy Spirit is the light. But when the light comes to you and me, we have filters. We have Things in our past, things in our future, jobs, this or that. There's so many ways in which we see things through the lens of our own personality and our own experience. And so God, when God comes to you as the light, he will come in different ways. Perhaps the red that you saw there is a smell. Perhaps the green is a sound. The yellow is what he looks like. The purple is what he feels like. The blue is something that you can touch. There's so many ways in which we can detect the Holy Spirit near us so that we can open our hearts up so that God can speak to us and guide us and counsel us or rebuke us even. The first one is smell. Got a beautiful fragrant flower here. You know, the Bible talks about the fragrance of God. Perfume makers in the Old Testament and the Old Covenant would make uh, special crafted oil exclusively for anointing things for the purpose of God. And the smell, they said, was sacred and it was distinctive in its aroma. Christ's Christ love is called a fragrant offering, Ephesians 5 and 2. And walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering. A sacrifice to God is a fragrant aroma. And then in 2 Corinthians, Paul speaking and he says, But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of knowledge in Him in every place. In every place. I was walking around in Borden, Ontario. And I went into the Air Force Museum there. I've told you before. As soon as I stepped in the, the place, I could smell that, that oldness of the wood and of the things in there, right? You could smell the age. And when I stepped on that wooden board and creaked, 
Boom! I was a little boy in my grandmother's house. My grandmother raised me in downtown Toronto. I was a little boy in her house. I was there in my mind, the smell, the sound. I was there. And it was as if the museum was calling me to a memory back with my grandparents. A lovely memory. I put in your bulletin and I and uh, uh, as well for you. I, I want you to, to I'm gonna read this, I want you to read it along, and, and this will apply to all things, but this is do you have a bulletin, sir? A bulletin? Does it don't? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It says this. At first you detect an aroma. There's nothing cooking. Nobody's just out of the shower. No deodorant. No perfume. It's just clean air and you detect a fragrance. And once you detect the fragrance and concentrate on it, you can experience the subtleness of each note of the aroma, the strength, the duration, where the fragrance takes you in your mind and spirit, whether place or time or person or event. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you through the uniqueness of the fragrance. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose and let the spirit guide you in the experience. I don't know if anyone here has smelled the aroma of the Holy Spirit. I have not, I've touched evil in Africa. I've heard God's voice when he told us that we would keep and raise uh, Isaac. Sometimes a fragrance comes and it takes us to a place in the Bible or it takes us somewhere that God wants us to go back to and to remember. I was remembering my grandfather and my mother sent me a, a website or a site of Shrewsbury and just on the border of Wales and uh, where my grandfather's buried. And uh, he died a long time ago when I was a young child, but he couldn't go with his, with his wife, Teresa McNamara, because she was Catholic and he was Protestant and they wouldn't let his body in the, in the graveyard. And so they shipped him back to England. He's buried with his mother there. And just looking at that old cemetery and looking at the old church, I, I, I have been there. I have seen this place. Like, I can feel myself standing above his mother's grave. And it was a wonderful memory of him. What about hearing? What about hearing the Holy Spirit? Here's a picture of the island of Cyprus on the screen right now. It looks like a finger is kind of pointing somewhere. If you were to follow the direction of that finger till it hit the land, you would 100% be in the ancient city of Antioch. That's where it is. And Antioch was a church where the Spirit spoke to them. And the Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Does the Holy Spirit speak to you today? It spoke to me 22 years ago. Has the Holy Spirit Spoken to you, and, and if God, if the Holy Spirit is speaking, do you know it's the Holy Spirit? Can you detect that voice and relate it with God? Romans 8 and 14 says this For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And we should expect the Holy Spirit to lead us in many different ways. He spoke in different ways to Adam to Abraham, to Moses, to Deborah, Samuel, Elijah, Elisha, Mary, Paul, and, and so many more. And he gave a message to Philip and to Peter here in Acts 10 and 19. And while Peter was reflecting on the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. He spoke in different ways in the Jerusalem Council. And he speaks in different ways to us. But 
But to know that the Spirit's there, so we can experience the Spirit, we need to have contact with the Spirit, and we have to know when God is speaking to us. We have to know when God is laying down a trail of aromatic fragrances for us to, to in our mind's eye, to go to a place or be transported somewhere. Have you ever seen God? Have you ever seen the Holy Spirit? Sorry. One of the mysteries of God is the Holy Spirit's appearance. The Bible gives us glimpses of the Father, glimpses of the Son, but the Bible doesn't mention a whole lot about what the Holy Spirit looks like. Now, Jesus always said, if you, if you want to know what the Father is, you get to know me. If you see me, you've seen the Father. If you know me, you know the Father. You hear me, you've heard the Father. Whenever there is an appearance, whenever there is a, 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 a theophany, they call it, whenever there's an appearance of God in a physical form on the earth, it is Yeshua. It is Jesus. And when we see Yeshua, we see God. So we know what God might look like. We know what Jesus might look like. But what does the Holy Spirit look like? It's not on the screen here, but in John 3 and 8, we read, The wind blows where it wants to. You hear it. You see, the result of the wind blowing, we are born of the wind. We cannot see it, but we can feel it. However, however, we read this in Luke chapter 3 and verse 22. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form, like a dove, and a voice came out of heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I want to read to you a passage here. It's not on the screen. It's not anywhere else. I just want you to listen to the words if you can. It's from Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Listen carefully. And it came to pass in the sixth year, the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in, in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. And then I beheld, and, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of a fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire, and from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness and the color of amber. And he put forth the form of a hand, and he took me by the lock of my head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heavens, and brought me in the vision of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looked towards the north, where there was a seat of the image of jealousy which provo uh, provoked to jealousy. And behold, the glory of God of heaven was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Did Ezekiel see the Holy Spirit who grabbed him by a tuft of his hair and lifted him up towards heaven to give him a vision? Is it possible to feel or touch the Holy Spirit? Is it possible to feel the presence in your inside? 2 Kings 13 and 20 reads this way. Elisha died. Elisha died. Elisha, who took the mantle that fell from Elijah as he was taken up in a chariot of fire, smacked it on the water of the Jordan, and the water dried up so he could walk across. He did more than Elijah ever did. Elisha. When Elisha died and they buried him, now the bands of the Moabites would invade the land in the spring of the year. And as they were burying a man, behold, they saw a marauding band, and they cast the man into the grave of Elisha. And when the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5 and 30, Immediately Jesus, perceiving in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around to the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? Who touched me? The woman with 12 years of, of, of menstruation, 12 years of consistent misery, reached out in the crowd as Jesus is walking to the daughter of the temple, uh, master of the temple, right, who was 12 years old uh, and, and was dying. He's, he's going to go there. He's going to do what he can do. And this woman comes up and touches him. And as soon as she touches 
the, the fringe, the little tassels on the bottom of his outer cloak. Remember one piece, outer cloak. As soon as she does that, she's healed. He didn't have to turn. He didn't have to talk. He didn't have to say anything. She touched it. She was healed. And at the same time, Jesus stops and he says, who touched me? I felt the power leave. This woman touched the Holy Spirit who brought the healing power down through Yeshua and into her hands as she held on to the fringes. She did feel, she did touch the Holy Spirit. I want to stop right now what we're doing and, and listen. I want you to listen to these words. They're from a very young aviator, John Gillespie Maggie Jr. His picture's here. Young man in World War II. He was a pilot. He died a, a couple of months uh, before his 19th birthday. And he was flying around and he wanted to write about what it felt. The freedom of being in, in the air, in the sky. And you have heard this before. I'm sure you have. And this is what he wrote before he died. He wrote this. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the sky on laughter silvered wings. Sunward I climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of the air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the wind swept heights with easy grace where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silence lifting mind I trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space put out my hand and touched the face of God. Each and every one of you can experience the Holy Spirit. But before you can experience the Holy Spirit's work in your lives, you have to know that the Holy Spirit is there. How to detect the presence of the Holy Spirit. Is the Spirit coming to you in a fragrance? Is it coming to you in a, a, an aroma? Is it coming to you because you can see somehow or touch somehow or hear somehow? Don't dismiss these things. If you smell something and they look around, oh, it's just nothing and you walk away. No, stop. Stop and ask, God, are you trying to, are you trying to speak to me? Holy Spirit, are you trying to tell me something? If you hear something and then it's gone, stop, don't dismiss it. Ask God, God, are you trying to tell me something? Should I go somewhere? Take time to understand when the Holy Spirit approaches you and wants to speak and guide or correct and love unconditionally through so many different ways. We're going to stand, if you're able to stand, we're going to sing a beautiful song right now. And uh, did I put it here? I'm starting to lose my mind a bit. I know it's going fast. Isn't it? uh, it's a song called um, "Spirit of the Living God." Spirit of the Living God. Oh yeah. And so, if you're able to stand, please stand. And we'll pray in just a minute. I believe with every fiber of my being that there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place right now. And I challenge you in the quietness of your mind and your souls as we sing this, or you listen to it, or you meditate on the words. Listen for the spirit. Look for the spirit. Take in the aroma of the Spirit. Try to feel the Spirit. The Spirit wants to do a work in your body. There's 